guys, what's up? It's your girl D here. Um, I just wanted to do something a little bit different this time. I wanted to do a vlog about long distance and how to make that work. With the history of Dylan and I, pretty much our whole relationship has been long distance. And so I wanted to just talk to you about tips and things that you guys can do if you're in a relationship right now that's long distance or if you've had experience with it before, you might be able to relate a little bit. So I just wanted to talk to you kind of about Dylan and I's relationship and just... Ah! What are you doing here? <laughs> what? <laughs> Did you guys see the look on her face? <laughs> I'm just kidding. That was staged. I didn't just sneak up on her. I've been home for a couple of days now. Surprise! Surprise! <laughs> Ace, come here, bud. Come here. Daddy's home. Come here. Daddy's home. Daddy's home. Now. Surprise! Dylan came into town from Atlanta okay. for okay. a couple days for some family stuff we have going on. So here we are, we wanted to do a different kind of vlog for you guys today. We wanted to talk about long distance and just kind of our journey through it and how we made it work, little like tips, things you guys can do, or maybe you can just like relate in some way. So as soon as I got home, first things first, I haven't seen my parents in a while, so I figured, hey, let's do a double date. So we set up a double date, me, the wifey, took the parents out. Now we're gonna go on a double date with the parents. Me, this fine woman. Just want to take a quick peek at what my dad's been up to. Chatwin Homes, one of the houses he's building in his neighborhood. Does an amazing job. There's the gorgeous abode. Chatwin Homes. Look who it is. Oh my gosh! Is the second prettiest girl I know. Mom, you look gorgeous. And your home is gorgeous. Hey. Mom, you're cute. Mom, you're cute. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Hi. Hey, Hi. Dad. Cute. That was cruisers. This car's cool. It's leather. Yeah. Uh, this is Derek's rental he's letting us borrow. Oh, but it's nice. Such a social butterfly. Singing in the rain. Singing in the rain. Oh, wait, we passed the car. Oh, my goodness, look who it is. Oh, my goodness. Whoa. Hi, precious. Hey, can you come give Uncle D a hug? I love you. Hello. Hi. Can you say Auntie Delia? Auntie Delia. That's me. <laughs> Milo? Who's this? Who's this? Am I uncle or my uncle. daddy? Yeah, uncle. Good. It's a silly uncle, huh? You're silly. So as you guys probably know, we have done long distance, our whole relationship ever since we met. We met on a beach in Mexico. She's from Arizona, I'm from Utah. Naturally, meeting in a different country, not from the same states, we had to do long distance. So we did it. For how many years? March we 13th met? would be 2014. Five years. Five years. Five years. So, we, so, so we dated for I think three years? And then we got engaged for a year, and then... Yep, engaged yeah. for one year, dated three years. Yeah. And even with my job currently, we still do the long distance. As you guys saw, 
I, our last vlog, I was in Atlanta. She flew out with me, stayed the week with me out there, came out to work with me, and she came home. That's that's normal. So I'll go out for the whole summertime. Normal for us. That's normality for us. We just want to talk about it because I think a lot of the things that help you get through a long distance relationship are also things that will help you with any relationship in general. So first things first, constant communication. Yeah, I would say trust and communication are like key and vital to making your relationship last, especially with long distance. Staying in constant communication is so, so important. It's pretty much the only thing you have because that person's not there with you. How many threads do we have going on? We would have a thread, a different conversation thread. We'd have one on iMessage, of course. We would be on Pinterest. So we would just constantly send people like pictures back and forth of, hey, check out this outfit, check out this house. What do you think about this home? We're, we love home decor. We love architecture. It was like one on Pinterest, one on Facebook, one on um, like texting, one on... Words of Friends. Oh yeah, Words of Friends. We like always games. play that game together. We just had, we had different platforms that we would talk on, which would kind of make it exciting when like, you know, you just get a notification from like the boy you like or something and it's just... It's like fun and thrilling and intriguing and so we would just do little things like that to keep it kind of fresh and like spunky. Or one of my favorite things that Dylan always did was send me early good morning messages so when I woke up I'd have like a super cute like you know romantic message from him of like good morning and then we'd start our day off and usually when Dylan's out during the summer there's somewhat of a time difference and so he'd always wake up earlier than I would. His day gets started a lot earlier and he has a lot longer of a day usually. His days go from like 12 to 14 hours and so he's really busy so in the morning is our time that we do a lot of our talking. Throughout the day you know we kind of like follow up with each other and just like check in and say hi how are you, miss you love you, whatever it was. At night, we would always end with a good night message, usually like a phone call if he had time, or we would try to Skype or FaceTime, which I hated. I hate, I think it's so awkward. But I yeah. loved it. How many times did I screenshot? Before yeah. they tell you that you screenshot, I would I would FaceTime her just to screenshot her at all times. And I would, yeah, we would just be talking, he like screenshot the ugly pics <laughs> in my face and be like all the I would, it would, I'd go silent for a second and then I'd just smile randomly and she'd be like, did you just screenshot? Yeah. Indeed. Um, so we would always make sure and like write long goodnight messages and be as connected as possible with that. Texting, like uh, calling, FaceTime, that was really our only means of communication since we couldn't be together. After a while and like once our relationship kind of grew a little bit, we had this really cute little like what was it dd little so phrase we would do so here it is dd it's a super cute and cheesy string of emojis that to this day we still say to each other and what it means hold on i'm gonna quiz her so this started like right when we first started texting the summer after i went out after that day in mexico that we met and i did this and it kind of meant what did it mean Wait, hang on. Let me see if I can remember the emojis. Couple in the middle holding hands. Yep. What does it stand for? The heart. Yep. And its meaning is we walk together side by side forever. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so cheesy, right? Uh, honestly, that little phrase got me through a lot of hard times. And that was kind of our little stamp uh, every night before bed. Before we said goodnight, I'd say, I love you, I love you, and then it was that stamp. And in your phone, you can set up hotkeys, where you basically just type a couple of letters and it'll automatically fill in the rest of the sentence. It's like a little shortcut. Yeah, shortcut. So, it's pretty cool. Anyways, our shortcut for that symbol is DD, Dylan and Julia. And we still do it to this day. It is like a, it's a thing. So, I don't know. Come up with your own little motto for your relationship because that honestly got me through a lot. Distance was probably the hardest thing I've ever had to go through, long distance relationship. One of the it's hardest things. It's without a doubt one of the hardest things because oh, yeah. naturally as a human being, you want the companionship and the closeness of that other person with you. And it's so hard when you can't physically be with somebody and share that like connection together. You have to figure out other means to do that and still feel connected. So it was 100% probably the hardest thing I've ever done. Yeah. And 
And because well, of it, we'll never do it again, but no, I would well, never do it again. Well, we do it. Way. We do it, obviously, with my job and how we're separated. And, and But the thing is, we are able to do it, and it's not hard anymore. Like, we've gone through just the months without – well, not just the, not just months without seeing each other. Months without seeing each other as an undeveloped couple. And that's probably the hardest part. It's like when yeah. you're first dating, when you're first kind of trying to establish, okay, what are we? Are we exclusive? Are you seeing other people? Am I seeing, are we completely done talking with everyone? Or like, you know, all the things of a normal relationship. But try doing that when you're thousands of miles apart in different states. And you're still trying to learn about that person, which is really hard because usually in relationships, you guys can like figure out reactions or you can figure out ways in which they like things done or their personality or like whatever it is. You kind of learn about that person and you learn how they're, what they're like. And when you only know a person, so to speak, through messaging and phone call and stuff. It's a little bit harder. Kind of put us back a little bit. It didn't, you know, it wasn't hard, but we still did have to go through the process of learning about each other and getting to know each other in person. Because it was so difficult, I feel like we're able to get through anything together. I feel like it's important to go through hard times with that person. You have to go through hard times with your significant other so that you guys know how to get through it together. Because you have to learn that when it comes down to it, it's just going to be you and them. Uh, in the future, it's just really the only person that's going to stick by your side probably for the rest of your life always is your spouse. And so learning to overcome adversity and trials together is, and that's what we were able to do. That's what long distance does for you. You kind of are forced to. You have to. During the summer months, we always tried to make an effort to see each other. I feel like every like few weeks or so, whether if it was just for like the weekend or like a week if I could like take work off or whatever it was I feel like we'd always have we always would know like the next time we'd see each other and make that a point I'd always try and book my flights early that way I didn't we didn't, weren't putting so much money out for flights and so we'd always kind of know the next time we'd see each other and I feel like that kind of held us over and it was easier to make it through those weeks that we weren't together the times when she would come out we would have everything planned out and that's kind of the nice thing about long distance the bittersweet part of it the sweet would be when we finally do get to be together it was so great every night we'd have something planned there's no downtime that's also the good and bad because when you are together it's so good and you're always planning things and always doing fun activities that's almost kind of like that feeling of normality where it's totally normal to just not do anything and just sit back and just netflix and just it takes a while for that to develop when we're not seeing each other every single day. I think that's partly why we dated for so long. Things kind of just took a, their toll, took its time. And when I would go out with him, I would go and like work with him. I would go out and sell with him so that we used up a majority of the time that we had. Even if we were out working together, we'd still have fun together. And like the last vlog we just made, you know, we just try and enjoy every single moment that we have together. And if that's him and I working together and going out and doing the job together, and that's what we did. And you just, like, make it work. And then after the day was done, we'd go out, have dinner, maybe, like, watch a movie, just hang out, and then, you know, start it all over. Do you remember the first time you came out with me? No. It was <laughs> in 2014 in Arkansas. Little Rock, Arkansas. First day of her coming in with me on the doors of my job is... She was working at Nordstrom, and that was one of my favorite things. Working at Nordstrom, being a fashionista like she is, she loves outfits, she loves fashion and clothing. I'd always have her send me the outfit of the day. Hashtag Please. outfit of the day. Hashtag outfit of the day. Uh, this became a big thing for me. Every single day, I would wait for her outfit of the day. And it's funny because I would send mine back to her, but mine consisted of the same exact outfit, one, <laughs> of, <laughs> one of four different colors. So it was kind of exciting because she didn't know, am I going to get gray today? Am I going to get white or black? I or orange was my favorite. I, I threw in an, an orange every now and again just to spice things up. Uh, so anyways, I was, I was always looking forward to her outfits of the day. I love them because this girl just knows how to dress. She clearly is, has a knack for it. So outfits of the day. There are so many. I'm going to throw them up here because they're so great. And this is literally, I got this text message at some point in the day and it was always exciting. And a lot of these have that, can't, uh, have the, the ground in your, in your oh, like fitting cow room, cowhide fitting yeah. room floor in Nordstrom. In Scottsdale, we worked in the team. I worked in the team department. I was a personal stylist in that area, and so we had like this cowhide rug, like 
spotty thing. So, anyway, it's funny. It's like a staple piece in all the pits. Hey, and that is such a thing to this day. Where's your hat? So we just went to the store the other day and Dylan saw a hat. And guess what it says on it? And you know I had to buy this hat. Of course, it says outfit of the day. Because this has been a big thing. And I saw that and I said, babe, we're buying this hat. I bought this hat. From my babe. From my babe. Not only that, he's like so cute. Just like a little hopeless romantic guy. Oh yeah. Pinterest was a thing at the time. It still is a thing. I just don't use it a whole lot anymore. But I made like a Pinterest well, board. Well, first of all, he has a Pinterest board called For My Dress Up Doll. <laughs> <laughs> where I would pin, and she was included, and I'd pin all like my favorite outfits for girls. And I just throw them up there, and, and it's kind of just inspo, inspiration for her to know, kind of like, this is how I like when you wear this kind of stuff, or this kind of stuff. But she is so good at fashion that she deserves her own Pinterest board, so I threw her up there. <laughs> so funny. <It's> cute. <sighs> no, I know, <laughs> I'm so cute. <laughs> Ew, you're cute. Remember this one time I got this really funny box in the mail. It was a quirky box. It said quirk box on it. And it had a bunch of random things in there that he just felt like sending. It had like ramen soup. Do you want to know the honest truth? I was cleaning out my pantry and I just put everything in there. It was like ramen soup. There's some snacks and treats, uh, like Tootsie Rolls. And I put like plastic spoons and napkins. A couple like... Cheez-Its. <laughs> yeah, just random things. And then there was like a picture of us or something, I think, in it. Yeah. There's something, something cute. And it was just fun. And it it was just fun getting in the mail because of, it made me feel like he was thinking about me. And that just, it was the, it's the little things that matter, you guys. I always tell him it's the little things. It's like in the morning, now that we're married, it's in the morning, like making the bed and taking an extra second to do something just to make me happy. It's not the big, fancy, extravagant things it's the small simple things that you know when somebody like cares about you and loves you that they they just do because they want you to be happy if and you guys want to make your wives happy make the bed in the morning they freaking love it yeah it's honestly great it's so nice but um buy them a puppy they love them too and take the dog for a walk oh and give the dog water give you water huh thank you yeah he's still alive can i have a kiss of course give him water can i have a kiss thank you okay Run right along now. Run right along. So, you know, it's just little things. And then, of course, like, he sent flowers. Like, he would send, like, just little cute things just to let me know that he was thinking of me. And that, you know, for any girl, makes you feel good and it makes you feel special. You know, just little things like that to kind of spice things up and keep things interesting, I guess. Yes, ma'am. I think a really important part of being able to handle long distance is to learn to love yourself. Sounds weird, but you have to learn to be independent. We both were just independent before we met each other. My twin brother lived with me. He got married, moved out. So I lived by myself in our in my home for years. I was just always by myself. I learned to enjoy time alone. I enjoyed solitude, doing things myself, my own routine. Uh, and I was just self-sufficient. I didn't really need anybody else. And I was just happy doing things on my own. She's kind of the same way. Always was self-sufficient, always worked hard, paid for all her own bills, provided for herself. And I think it's really important to learn to enjoy your own company and to really enjoy the person that you are. And I think this is a, probably a topic for a different conversation, but just progress. I think if you're always progressing, you're going to be happy with yourself. So well, and also having your own individuality and not being dependent on somebody else for your happiness is really important because if you can be happy by yourself, then, I mean, it makes long distance that much easier. You can be happy by yourself, although it would be more ideal to be with that person. You can be happy with them as well. I mean, commitment is very, very important. You have to choose to be committed to that person and you have to choose them every single day. You have to find ways to you know, like be involved with each other and be engaged and be connected. And sometimes, you know, it's not easy, but you have to figure out ways to do that. And um, one thing that... <laughs> what are you doing, bud? Hey, <laughs> what are you doing over there? Just trying to get um, One thing that I think is really important is talking about what's going on in each other's lives. I think keeping everybody on the same page, like both parties on the same page and involved in things, um, they feel more 
you feel more close to them. And so even if it's, he is shaking that toy. Um, even if he's talking to me about work stuff or drama going on with work or whatever it was and me getting off work and calling him and venting about whatever I was dealing with at work, you know, it's just little things like that to where you can just like laugh it off or just talk about it. And it's just another way that you can be involved with each other. So I think it's very important to be, to share your entire life with the other person. It's true. What she said, her drama, like all the drama between me and my guys and just the stuff I was going through, I'd share with her. She'd share her stuff with her friends or family or whatever's going on in her life with me. It's important to be involved. I think that's a very important, we're not parents yet, but I plan to be very involved with my children and know what's going on in their lives. And I promise you guys, you guys watching this, the women, they will recognize, just listen to them because they love when you just know what's going on in their life and things that they're doing, things that they're, their goals, their plans, their achievements, things that make them happy or and if you can listen to those things and ask about them, just ask the right questions. Babe, so how is your day? How are you? Uh, what are your goals? Where would you like to, you know, whatever. Just listen and be involved. Very important. Okay, with that being said, yes, we made it through it. And for the most part, things were pretty good. But in the beginning, there were some hiccups and there were some challenges. There were some things that made the relationship kind of hard. And we're open with it and we're we've like moved on from it not everything is going to be smooth not everything's going to be perfect you have two people that are coming from two different places that have had a past there's obviously going to be some things that you have to like work through and talk about and overcome and so dylan and i we both made mistakes there were things that he did that i didn't like there were things i did that he didn't like and we had to talk about it that's normal yeah, we have our arguments, we have our moments where every couple does, and we've had our hard times. It always sucks fighting with your spouse, your significant other, girlfriend, wife, whatever. It sucks tenfold when you're fighting and you guys are apart in different states and you can't go to drive to their house that night and just say, hey babe, I'm sorry, give them a hug. So I think the one rule of thumb that I think it got us through a lot of this stuff is to swallow your pride. And for me, I had to always think that swallow your pride, Dylan. If you get in an argument, take a, a, a day, half a day, uh, cool down, let her cool down. Don't ever let it fester. I'll always shoot a long email text at the end of the night, just apologizing. Da, 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 da. I don't want to keep on fighting. I don't want to continue not talking. It's so hard. Uh, I'm sorry. I love you. Swallow your pride. And the thing that's most important is admitting to your mistakes. If you make a mistake, just admit to it and be like, you know what? I'm sorry. Like I made the wrong choice and that I reacted in the wrong way, I did something wrong, like I want to be up front with you, this is what happened, etc, etc. Like being able to admit your faults and your wrongdoings and then just forgiving and moving on. Because if you don't, then you're going to hold a grudge forever and it's going to cause you more harm than it's going to cause the other person in it. Eventually it's going to cause harm in the relationship and people make mistakes, that's life. Like. We're here to learn from our mistakes and to move on. We have a thing where it's, we don't bring up the past. If we've gotten into a past argument over something and it's had closure and we both said, I'm sorry, whoever was at fault, whatever, apologize, we're over it, we're over it. The next day you wake up, it is a whole new day, fresh, clean slate. That's how it has to be. There's no... There's no point to revisit old fights or arguments, things that you guys have already talked about. Talking about it once, admitting to your wrongdoings, understanding the mistake that happened, and then talk, like forgiving, moving on. And that's the only way that a relationship is going to survive. You have to be able to forgive and move on. Progress. Remember that word? It's <laughs> progress. I'm telling you, it's progress. And when you're progressing to progress to progress, you can't digress. You can't go back. Go forward. Always. Always move forward. It's done, closed up, true pow, move on. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Just to kind of finish this off with long distance, with anything, when we would meet up together, we would always do things that we enjoy doing together. Yeah, finding things that you guys enjoy as a couple, finding things that are similar, it makes time much more enjoyable because you like we love to go, we love to travel, we love to go to theme parks, we love to go to movies, we are foodies, we love 
like trying out new restaurants and looking at houses. We have a lot of different things that we like do and that we can relate and talk about. And I feel like it's important to be able to have hobbies and things that you guys can do together to enjoy the time that you have. To look forward to the next event. Do things yeah. that you enjoy doing together. For example, I'm never going to get her to sit down next to me and play video games. She doesn't like it. It's not her thing. It's that would be great for me. Not her thing. You know what? That's cool. Because if she was super into gaming, it would be kind of weird. Honestly. No uh, offense if you're a gamer. You have to do things that you love doing together. So speaking of something we love to do, I love my motorcycle. There's actually a spot for a passenger on the back. And we love looking at houses. So we're going to go do that right now. Is that okay, Nan? when it comes to long distance relationship or just relationships in general. Trust, communication, commitment, finding things that you love about that person, constantly choosing them, always looking for the good in them, always lifting them up. Never looking back, never going back to the past, always progressing and moving forward. Always forgiving. You have to learn to forgive and to move on. Finding and things that you guys love to do together that brings you closer, one of my love languages that I always tell them is that I need quality time. I love just like hanging out and talking. I'm a big talker. I just love, I can talk for like hours. I just love to talk about anything and everything. And so when we can just sit down and just talk and he's not on his phone, I'm not on my phone and we can just enjoy time together. That's um, one of my favorite things to do. And it's free. Hang out and enjoy each other's like presence. And it's so nice. And I think I enjoy it a lot because we did, we lost so much time in the beginning of our relationship that now when we're together, I just soak up every single moment that we have together. And even though I get him forever, we can still never have enough time. So, hey, shout outs for the fam. The first shout out, let's we're gonna go with Lindsay Tuttle. Lindsay Thank you Tuttle. for your love and your support. And you're so nice. And we're grateful for you being on our channel and being a part of the fam. Thank you, Lindsay. We really appreciate it. And the next shout out goes to Kelly. Yes. Thank you, Kelly. We appreciate you. We're so glad you're here. Thank you for being part of our family and part of our journey. We wish you the very best as well as all of you. Thank you. Yeah, honestly, we have the best subscribers every single person pretty much like i think we get like 99.9 .9 positive, positive and uplifting and nice and kind people who are leaving just really sweet things on our page and it's so nice we love it and we're so grateful for all of you and constant love and support that we feel from you and it's so genuine and we just really want to say thank you so it's endearing thank you we love you oh that's a lot of love babe <laughs> So just remember to be happy and be kind and that life is beautiful. It's so beautiful.